Sway in the morning. Get your applause going. Let me tell you something, man. That was a very important moment. Keep it going. In my journey, in my career, it was a very important time and place when that Sway Fest first annual took place at the B. That was a whole lot of stuff coming back 360 for me coming back to the Bay and to do the same things we were doing in the 90s. Never thought I'd be doing it in 2019. Did that shit in the 90s and wanted to make sure it was done absolutely right mm -hmm. in 2019. Mm -hmm. And there were only a couple of people that immediately I was like, we got to get this person, we got to get this person, and we got to get that person. And then whoever else we get, I'm cool with. Mm -hmm. But as long as these people are attached to this event, I know it's authentic. Um, I know it's real because I know they're real. I know their story. My family knows their stories. And it was real important for me to um, ask this woman to be a part of this show because we haven't seen anything like this ever be. Special. Keep it going, OQ. Good Night in the Ghetto came out, made her a national, international name and brand. We haven't seen anything like this. When you look at uh, New York, when you talk about the Lil' Kims and the Foxy Browns and the Nicki Minaj's, right? Um, Jersey, you know, the Heather Bees. Queen Latifah, the Lauren, Rod Digger, Lauren Hill. You know, these are people, I could keep naming people from different regions, women who have gone on to achieve massive success through the hip-hop business, through this through this uh, culture. Shout out to Missy Elliott. Missy Shout out Elliot. to Rhapsody. Talk to him. Talk to him. Shout out to I'm telling we just got to keep shouting out our queens for real. Talk Shout to out him. to the brat. Um, man, so many. So Talk many. to him. Young so Devin. Many. Shout the out brat. to Young Devin. Talk to him. Man, Young Look, Devin. Woo. The Bay, we've had, you know, Conscious Daughters and, 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 and 357. And, and, yeah, yeah, I went way back, I know, but they were. <laughs> That's all yeah, yeah, but you know, uh, but as a but as a solo as artist, as a solo artist, we have never, we have yet to see any woman reach the heights that she has as a hip hop artist that has come from Northern California, that has come from the Bay, and not only as an artist but also as a boss. Hello. Okay. <laughs> CEO Hello. of Grind Work. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, here to celebrate her new album. Got it made. Not Sir. trying to make it, got it made. Right. Give it up for the one and only Kamaya. Know this shit. That's a nice intro. Gotta give it to you. That's real love right there. It's, it's true dope. love because it, it's um. I, yeah, I keep. I even said it to you at the fest, and you're probably looking at me like, "Why this dude just be on me like this?" But <laughs> <laughs> I was very appreciative of you showing up and performing on that stage and just representing what that whole Sway Fest movement is really about. It ain't about me. I don't, you know, I'm good. It was about you, though. I feel like a lot of people in my generation, they don't pay homage to the people before them. And I don't feel like they supposed to give them that love that they that y'all built the platform for us. You've been here for decades. So mm -hmm. it's like, it shouldn't be a question in my mind if Sway asks me to do something, if I'm going to do it or not. I'm doing it. So that's why I came. Mm. Shit, I'm about to tear up, y'all. Come on. <laughs> cry, Sway. Cry. You think I should? <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> and what makes it so dope mm -hmm. is, um, I, I won't harp on the connection, but I didn't realize how you and my cousin, Quasi, and... Yeah, yeah. my peoples, Did man. Did y'all go to school together? What? Man, that's like some, you know, Oakland, man. When you're really out there and you're playing in them streets and everybody in certain functions and doing certain things, y'all gonna know each other. And I just always knew Quas. Yeah. <laughs> what well, was Quas rep? I'm on a hand, hover on I just Quas. knew him because we had the same friends and acquaintance, so it's like we shoot dice together. We did all type of shit growing up together. It's just like, that's the homie. Like, that's love right there. What was your dice game like? I didn't know. Man, y all, y all, I, what you be, doing? Y'all, y'all. That was my hustle. My mama hated that shit. Uh -huh. My brother, one of my play brothers, he died now, James, the one that died from cancer. Yeah. That nigga showed me how to shoot dice in like ninth grade. That was the worst thing he ever did. <laughs> what them damn side bets? I used to come home. That's how I bought all my Jordans, everything. Shooting dice. Shooting dice. Shooting dice wow. at lunch. Like what was a good, like what was the most you walked away with? Like five hundred dollars. And this is like ninth grade. So it's that's like that's huge. a lot of money. Like okay. People was betting their whole life sitting in dice caves. You was making five hundred in the yeah. ninth grade. Grind work, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Grind work. <laughs> that's what it's about. Uh where was y'all shooting at? Like you was on the east. Man, we used to shoot. At Hayward High in the east, across the street from Youth Uprising. Anywhere we seen each other on them corners, we would shoot them damn <laughs> dice. That shit damn. was addictive. 
Shit, we used to shoot on 23rd on uh, East 19th. That was a spot, too, in the Dubs. Somebody, yeah. one of the homies had a house in the Dubs. That, sh- that shit was deadly over there. Yeah. Them <laughs> niggas used to be betting thousands over there. Like, y'all gonna lose y'all baby mama milk money. Like, yeah, they were betting thousands. That's where I'm from, Tracy, the Dubs. We didn't, <laughs> Dubs. You, can't, you can't come in less than Look a thousand. Her, she, just as, she, be, she from L.A., but she be with me so much. She adopted herself. She tell everybody she from the Murder Dubs. You from the Murder Dubs? <laughs> she be like, I'm from the Dubs. Like, <laughs> you from the Dubs now? <laughs> That's her Oakland hood. You know where Tony's Liquors is? <laughs> <laughs> you be you be taking the 14 downtown you do you be oh, okay she, she's so full of cap <laughs> so 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 go, what, what part of the town did you grow up in high street man high street Uptown. you say that bank um, girl yeah bank girl you bank say girl. that uh, i want to say in the intro where you say you are uh the song the intro you're a maxwell park kid exactly hello maxwell park mm-hmm. and i'll share this shit what I normally wouldn't do, but Kamai, I feel like I'm talking with family shit. <laughs> uh, Maxwell Park, when, when I first cut my locks, I cut my locks and my father passed, oh. and um, Maxwell, my, I got my hair cut at uh, Cut Close on High Street. Oh, yeah, right there by the liquor store. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and I took my locks to Maxwell Park and did a ceremony. I oh. walked up there, right up to Maxwell Park. That's dope. That, Cause we used to hang out in Maxwell Park. You said Bank Boys? Bank Boys, Bank Girls, you know MC Hammer, man. When I first met that nigga, he got, he low key banged on me. I didn't know that nigga was a gangster. He was like, yeah, 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 Bank Boys. We just had to pick niggas, dude. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> now I see why niggas are scared of you. I didn't know you got down like this. I think you just a dancing nigga put in the suits. <laughs> no, that nigga was a cold gangster. He like, yeah, 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 you from the hood, bank boys, bank girls. We just had to pick Nick. I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah, I feel you, town business. <laughs> do you go? Do you, do you go back to Maxwell Park well, a lot? I just shot my video over there, standing on my apartments. For what song? Still I am. If you look at Still the video, it's all up and down High Street. That's High my Street. My documentary, I was in Maxwell Park. Like, wow. I keep it straight to the roots. Like, mm-hmm. it ain't no funk. You can't fake the funk. If you really from Oakland, we gonna know. You gonna know. You gonna know. We your hood at. What you don't know, <laughs> though, is you might not know somebody's pedigree. Exactly. When you step out of Oakland. So you might see Kamaya. She's sweet. You know, wearing like, she likes wearing bright colors, whether uh-huh. it's purple or yellow. <laughs> Very approachable. Uh, smiling all the time. Smiling shit. and smell good. <laughs> sophisticated. You see her braids. You see the beads at the bottom. Black <laughs> as hell. Woke okay. as fuck. Okay. Uh-huh. But, then, but then if you step to it the wrong way, you, you might. see that town. Business real okay, quick. that clip Ooh, come out. Bong, bong, bong. Out like, hold on, this bitch, this, this she tripping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember they used to say that about Keisha, like, yeah, you don't want to mess with Keisha. I remember uh-huh. everybody used to say that because they thought she was just the sweetest little thing until she got mad. Like, oh no, that's that Oakland. That's that town business. <laughs> so when you travel now, uh, do you have to leave some of that mentality? behind because everybody ain't on that or yeah you know what it is i feel like what it is is like right when we disrespect it we one of them people who ain't got no filter Mm. i feel like everybody else not to be fake from the bay it's like we just always know how to keep it real Uh so you know how the first thing a people a person say when they from the bay i don't give a fuck i'm from oakland that's the first thing you say when you mad Uh you got to learn how to turn that off you know what i'm saying because these people don't understand that culture so you got to know when and just let go and walk away like because it's like that some people everything ain't worth a battle man Right. Everything ain't worth it. You just got to know your wins and your losses. And sometimes you ain't even losing. You getting yourself prepared for the bigger W. You know what I'm saying? So mm. people don't understand that. You got to focus on the bigger W and take that little L. Mm, take was that. there a moment that made you realize that lesson? Man, I done had so many in this business. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like I've been in it for a long time. Before I was professional, before these four years of being professional, I was like in the game since I was like 19 years old in the base. So I didn't right. overcome a lot of obstacles to get here. And I'm still overcoming and dealing with obstacles, but it's just like I ain't about to quit, and that's the spirit of a warrior. When you got that spirit, you're going to overcome anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm not bowing down to no man, no woman, and they know how I'm coming. I just keep riding because once you give up, they win. I'm not succumbing to none of this. Mm-hmm. It's a bigger picture. Wow. Like you said, it's a bigger legacy being built. It, it was never of me. Mm-hmm. So for some little girl 25 years from now, I got to represent to the fullest extent. Mm-hmm. Kamaya, ladies up. and gentlemen, new album, new mixtape, Got It Made. It's out now. In intro, you say one of the, some of the lyrics you say is "Y'all treat me like I, I'm paraphrasing. Y'all, I, y'all, y'all treat me like I'm fam- famous. I don't, I don't say, say shit. shit. I just keep a pistol with like eight clips." <laughs> Well, what does that mean, I, y'all treat me like I'm famous? Y'all what? treat me like I'm famous. Like, people, they they see me as this figure. I think I'm modestly humble. I don't ever equate myself to the success I have. I've always been very humble, so I don't uh-huh. I don't see myself as this figure that people see me as. I just see myself as Kamaya. And maybe that's a problem for others because I'm too approachable. But to me, I feel like that's why I'm relatable. People feel like I'm their cousin, their sister, their auntie, whatever. Ah, I was wondering from that line if people thought, okay, she's famous so I can play with her because she's not going to... Go hood on me. Nah. nah. I'm saying, like, they treat me like this. You know, people, like, even when we just did my release party, man, I was mad. Because it's like, 
It's a lot of people in here I know for real. We on this boat. We had did a boat from like uh. Oh, Alameda. y'all did a boat. We yeah. had the little yacht. Uh huh. As soon as I walk out, it's like people I know. Everybody taking pictures. Like y'all know me. That's uh-huh. what I'm saying when I say that. Like mm-hmm. you ain't gotta take a picture if you know me for real. Like we love each other. You gonna see me regardless, over and over again, consistently, consecutively. I don't like that. You don't like the picture. <laughs> I don't you know, like you know, the extraness. Like you don't know me. Like nigga, I know you since kindergarten. Relax. So, so if, if you know me and I go walk up to you, yo, what's up, y'all, y'all, yo, what's up? Hey, let me get let a me picture, get this picture. picture. I hate that. You hate that. I hate that. Shit, I, I hate that. That's like one of my biggest pet peeves. Because when I see you, and I know you for real, I ain't asking you for a picture. Right. We just gonna go eat breakfast. We gonna do whatever the hell we was doing. But because you see me as you don't see me as Kamaya, you see me as Kamaya, Kamaya. Now. Uh-huh. It's a difference. So it's like nigga, we wasn't doing this five months ago. So don't mm-hmm. t- ask me for a picture now. Like, mm. Damn, like you that. hard shit. It ain't, you know, it's just real. It's just realness. What the like, fuck? I just want a picture, y'all, y'all. <laughs> but it's like, that's the realness. And people forget that we still human. We're still people. And it's yeah. like, they think that now that you have a certain status, they, they have to document every moment of your mm. life. And it's like, you know me. Uh huh. I don't like that. You've been through a lot, too, um, in, in recent years, in the past four years Hell that yeah. you've been a professional. Um, and, um, I, I, and some stuff is un, unavoidable, and other stuff be mishaps. I, I read the story about um, being in a private screening room and a gun going off. Yeah, but man, they, they took that the wrong way, man. That shit, like, you know, I don't understand and I don't fuck with it because it's like people will see me and they see my philanthropy, all the stuff. Mm-hmm. In a moment, a situation like that happened, they make it seem like I'm not the same person that was just out here donating money to the Boys and Girls Club. Mm-hmm. First of all, at the end of the day, I'm a public figure. I have to protect myself. I legally have a carrying license. Mm-hmm. What happened was somebody had my gun. <laughs> He brought it back to me, and the safety wasn't on. Mm. We were in a my apartment building, which has its own screening room. Yeah, so it you was at only home? Me and my exactly, me and my friends by yeah. ourselves mm-hmm. watching Power. Maybe shit got a little too real. We got into one of the scenes a little bit too deeply. <laughs> I'm checking the gun to make sure it's on safety. This shit go bam. I'm like, oh fuck! I already knew. Like fuck. Then I walk towards the camera, like, is it the camera here? Then I see it. They got all this in court. It looked crazier than what really happened. Because it's like one of those, oh, shit. You know how you shocked? Like, what the fuck just happened? We right. shocked, too. I'm thinking the damn gun on safety. That's all that happened. They made it seem like I walked in a movie theater watching a movie and shot the motherfucker. Right. That's what they say. Yeah, like, they come on, man. Come what kind like of that? sense does that even make? Yeah. That don't even make no sense. Even the situation with me in the airport out here in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Like, that was somebody flexing a power. I fly nationally all the time. I've yeah. been in several states. Nobody has ever asked me to remove my bonnet. I mm-hmm. said, how do you know this is not for a religion? You can't force me to take off my bonnet just because you want me to take off my bonnet. Yeah. I know my rights. They got an attitude with that. She calls for backup. Then they're going to tell me that TSA can make up their own laws, essentially. What? I said, okay. Mm-hmm. Then we get into a verbal altercation. Now I'm resisting the rest. And Why? Because I didn't want to take off my bonnet being a black woman in America. Yeah. Then they take me to court. They try to have the media come in and everything. I said, all right, y'all put them in here. I'm going to tell them what happened. Guess what? The motherfuckers rolled up out there instantly. Y'all didn't see nothing on the news covering that. I haven't that. seen it. Because I know my rights. They think I'm like some intellectual woman because of the type of music I do. I'm highly educated. I am from Oakland. I come from a very political background. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Our families is Panthers, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So don't ever think you're going to just fuck me over and I'm not intellectual. Hello. I know what the hell going on out here. People be trying to tempt you and make an example out of you. And I feel like for me, because I'm so powerful, they try to sometimes make this narrative that I'm an angry black woman and that's not the case. She's, so I don't let them do it. She's right. an empowered, aware, do intelligent, don't do that conscious, I don't like that. Informed. informed woman, leader, Kamaya. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm going to play the single, Still I Am. Hey. Uh, Kamaya is here. Let's talk to her. 888-742-3345. You hear that bass bouncing? <laughs> but I, I like that. Uh, Tracy and I was having this conversation because we were listening to the album. And you have an authentic signature um, Oakland Bay Area uh, signature to your sound, but futuristic. Yeah. yeah. It's you, like you can. it's national. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like the Bay would be like this, the ghetto, grunge, messy, boom, boom, boom. Like, you can't go nowhere else with our <laughs> shit. My shit is crisp, so it's like you could hear it everywhere. That's what I think it is. And then the way I ride it and I'm mm-hmm. melodic, it's like it transcends. How did you become melodic? Like, when you first decided to rap, what were you all, always Mm-mm. melodic? What was I used it? to really rap for real. Uh-huh. 
Oh like, God, like I can like that's the thing about me. People don't know like I can really rap. I choose not to because I feel like like none of them want to hear that shit. No offense to who is a backpack rapper, but mm-hmm. I feel like we ain't in that climate no more. People want it's like so much stuff going on in the world. Niggas want to just feel good. You feel me? Yeah. Like people want to feel good and just hear good vibrations and vibes. Like, and I feel like and that comes from the melodies. Like sometimes you don't even have to understand it. It's the it's like I don't know what this motherfucker saying, but it just feel good. Like yeah. you know, mm-hmm. people just want to hear something that make them feel good, and that's why I don't really be on that. On the intro, you can hear like aspects of me. For real rapping. I hear it. Yeah, I could rap for real. I just choose not to. The melody, does the melody come first or the lyrics when you write? I hear melodies. So that's the one thing about me. I I, I tried to run away from music because I was scared of the entertainment business. And then I just kept hearing this stuff, hearing this stuff, and I was just like, God gave you a talent. So if it don't work out, then you go back to school. I was in college. I was doing my psychology major. Uh huh. I dropped out, and I took my music to the first extent and kept pushing it, and it happened. I was like, well, ain't no plan B. This worked. This is it, right? <laughs> yeah, it happened. So that's what it was. So you talk about um, the different trials and tribulations. You're now, you're now independent. Mm-hmm. Um, and you talk about um, wanting to make sure that, especially women know that you don't necessarily, you don't need a man to, in order to make it in this business. Uh, but you did have to take some L's to get to where you are, right? See, the situation with me specifically was I never wanted to sign to begin with. Okay. That was something that was like kind of like imposed on me just due to financial situations and uh, me trying to better my career and people feeling like that was something that I had to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you got to take a deal. I didn't even want to sign with the label I signed with initially. I wanted to sign with Atlantic. Mm-hmm. But what happened was my partner now was the person who flew me out from Oakland. He had a situation going on with 400 Records. Okay. That's why it was like a situation like, oh, why are you taking her everywhere else? Why you ain't bringing her to me? Then it turned into me like, oh, all right, I always wanted to be on death row. Fuck it, let me try. Mm. Okay. Mm. I see why death row didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were some of the things that didn't work that you couldn't get? Man, with? I just felt like it just it came at a point in time where it was like I couldn't be me. It was like everything was based on what this person wanted for me. And you you dealing with somebody who's still trying to focus on their career, which means that when it's time for them to worry about them, they don't give a fuck about you, which isn't fair to me because I didn't sign for this. Yeah. I signed to become the biggest me that I could possibly be to the first extent. You're not giving me the opportunity or that liberty. So I got to be a businesswoman and make that decision to walk away. Now, with the things that transpired after me walking away, were they okay? No, but that's what comes with this business. Am I upset about it? Hell no, that comes with this life. Mm-hmm. I wish them all the love and success on that side, but we move different over here now i got my own situation grind work yeah. uh that's fair enough i'm not mad at that um <laughs> still i am ghetto. Not, well, ghetto. Nah, but you know you <laughs> you've been making 500 dollars and since the ninth grade you you were <laughs> <laughs> you were you were a boss uh back then and that's just the nature of who we are in northern california Hustlers, my, man that's yeah. what people don't understand that's why i never wanted to deal I was yeah. like, with well, a good night in ghetto, I was already cracking. Like, when I got to my label, it seemed like I took a bigger deficit than Step I ever back. took. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, I was on fire. Y'all put the fire out. I thought y'all was supposed to add to the flame. Yeah. That's what the problem was. And that's so why I'm like, all right, I'm going to go back to the streets and get hot. Instead of me releasing the project that they had because they pissed me off and I'm an asshole, I was like, I'm going to just record a whole new project and y'all can shove that shit. Mm. So now that project's completely shoved. It's never coming out. And I dropped a whole nother project you don't own. That's just me being an asshole. Yeah, it is. Come on, yeah. Um, <laughs> why, 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 but do, do they have proprietorship over the, the, the shelf project, though? It can't come out without your consent? No. It can never come out. That's why I did that, because it's like, okay, I could have went to Empire and been like, guys, let's fight for this to come back out. But I'm going to fight for something that I don't own. Just to say that, all right, to my fans, I put something out. We made a conscious decision, me and my team, like, fuck that. And then me being an asshole, I'm like, I know I'm tight. I can make something way harder than that, and I'm not making you make another dollar off my name. Especially from the way y'all treat me. Fuck that. Kamaya. That's Mike News, jump in there. Bro. That's out. Yo, I'm enjoying this conversation. And listeners, I encourage you to go to YouTube and watch this conversation. <laughs> I, The way you respond to questions, I have never seen. It's kind of, it's very fascinating. You are so aware of who you are. Oh, like, you don't take a beat at all. And you jump right into it. And you know the answer already. So I'm just curious, like... Have you always been that way? Like, what helped you find your voice? Were you like this in high school? Did I've been music like this help my you find your voice? whole life. Yeah. Like, my grandmother and my mother hated me. When I tell you that, because it's, it, you know what it is? When you very <laughs> aware of something at a young age, it, yeah. it pisses them off. Because it's like, why the fuck do you know that and you're right? So it's like they try to suppress it, and I never let people suppress me. And that's what got me here. And my mother and them, they respect that now because they understood the the path that I was trying to take. Like, when you got a kid, you know, everybody is different. Some kids left brain, some kids right brain. They going to learn different based upon that. You got to let them grow. And I feel like when I grew, I became a beautiful rose, shit. Mm-hmm. And I just know who I am. I don't let nobody dim my light. 
a beautiful rose. Shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> In case you didn't get it. I love the dichotomy. Can you also speak on your style? That's so bomb. From Thank your you. hair to the bright colors, Thank everything. You. Like, did you have to develop it? Was it different from, like, some years ago? No, nah, I think I just, like, cross colors. TLC, I used to love TLC. Yeah. Very bright, very fun. And then my hair is just me unapologetically being black. Mm. Like, it's like either you got dreads or you got braids. That's the blackest you can be. Mm. And then I added the beads. That's the blacker. So it's blickety black black now. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll never see Kamai in like a lace front. I mean, I feel like I might. Like I feel like I always tell people like when I get nominated for a Grammy or something, I might step out in a dress and in it, and you see my real hair. But I feel like for me, I define myself by not being a sex kitten, mm. and I did that intentionally. And I wanted you to respect my art artistry and me as a woman before anything. And then my hair is just an extension of that. Like right. people get mad all the time. They be like. You need to take your hair out. Why you still got that? Because, bitch, it's my hair. I'm not telling you to change your weave color. So don't worry about what I'm doing. Like, everybody is entitled to their own <laughs> opinion. <up>. Like, <laughs> my news is that. loving this. Yeah, no, I don't like that shit. I feel like I don't I don't judge my counterparts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, any female in this business, if I respect you, I love you for who you are. That's who you are. Word. It's not my job to alter who you are. For me, I feel like people try to alter who I am because they only see one thing. Right. That's why I am who I am because it's only one me. So I'm not changing for you. Multidimensional. Do people Period. then have, like, assumptions? I feel like for the longest time, whenever you see, like, a woman who likes to be cozy and have hoodies and shit, people will automatically make assumptions about her sexuality. But I do like both. Oh, well. There it is. I don't care. Oh. <laughs> but yeah. you see what the thing about it was? I didn't like bitches for real when I was, like, coming up. I think the music industry make me gay. <laughs> 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 These bitches be freaked out. You can be like, no. They be like, yes. Like, all right, bitch, fuck it. I ain't gonna keep fighting you. Okay. <laughs> and you cute, so fuck it. I fuck around. Like, you know? <laughs> you know why that bitch is <laughs> I'm just bluntly honest. I feel like the difference between me and other girls, right? Because other girls do the same shit. It's just that they're sexed up. So you don't feel like, oh, no, it's not gay because I'm a tomboy or whatever the case may be. Oh, she's a dyke. I'm not a dyke. First of all, I like niggas first. Men are always my preference. Strong, black, scary men. Like, I feel like <laughs> the bonus is like, oh, shit, that nigga in here, man. But it's just like, shit. <laughs> if a bitch want to fuck with it, why not? Like, shit is life. You got, nigga, I'm going to die. Everybody going to live once. So if you going to live, have fun. Fuck that shit. Fuck what everybody think about you. You could care too much. Like, fuck that shit. You, you know, it's you. funny. Uh, Mike Muse just fell in love, by the way. Uh, <laughs> because you, when you listen, I want to say what uh, Jay Espinosa is Get Ratchet, right? Yeah. And get, I think it's Get Ratchet when yeah. you, like, drop that shit and, you know, it's like... But it, see, that record was like a call and response. That wasn't even made on no sexualized thing. Okay. It was just like... Me to asking you questions, baby. Can you shake some? Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, like, yeah. is this what you about to do? Okay, we fucking with you, like the whole crowd. Like it's like a call and response. Okay, so I that's... don't never talk from a perspective of me like being sexually aggressive towards women because that's just not me. Period. I just make music for people. Think... So if you're a man or a woman, you can just listen and digress. Well, well. Here's where my confusion, because I thought it was towards women when I saw Get Rat when I heard it Get Ratchet. It's towards them, but it's not me. Like he, Say, he okay, it's, it's like a, a call and response. Okay. It's like I'm asking you, like, is this what you're doing? So I see what you own. Okay, cool. Fuck with it. Like, okay, that's what that so for well, with men, you more direct because one of the freakiest, nastiest songs I think I ever heard. One eight hundred, I'm horny. <laughs> yes, that's it. One eight hundred, I'm horny. Damn it. That was definitely like a a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> Let's, take, let's, let's listen to that thing real quick. Swear to God, Maya's here. Too short. You didn't even put him on as a feature. That was just just put him on there. I, I wanted to surprise people because I was like, when you hear that and he just comes on and he's just so fucking raunchy, you're gonna be like, Ah, no, she didn't. <laughs> on that shake that monkey sample. So that's what it was. It was like a surprise. On that shake that monkey sample. Mm -hmm. You gotta love. It. I remember what um, Mix a Lot had. Uh, uh, what did he have? One nine hundred. Uh, Baby got back. There's a there's a lyric that said called one nine hundred Mix a Lot. And then they had to censor it. They censored the number because one. people were trying to call it, and he didn't own that number. Did, did, <laughs> is this a real number? One eight hundred. It definitely is. And I'm trying to do an explicit video with pouring up. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Oh man. Shit, are you gonna get? I'm what trying a, to get real porn stars. You're going to get real porn stars. It's going to raise the roof. Fuck it. 
Let's do it. OQ is a videographer. If you want him to come down, he'll do it for half price. I guarantee you. One eight hundred. I'm horny is a real hotline. So we was trying to call and get to corporate. It's like, hey, if you're went through loom, press one. It's like, nah, bitch. How we get to corporate? We was trying to make it a thing too. We got a campaign with them. Hardest shit ever. Trying to get through the one. Y'all never got through. I don't know, man. We've been trying. I think they've been trying their hardest to get to 1 800. I'm horny. Look for the video exclusive. Uh, Rashawn from LA. What up, man? What you want to say? What's popping? Popping, Rashawn. Oh, man. I'm just calling in. What's up? What's up, Sway? What's up, Heather? What's up? What up, fam? What did it do? Oh, man. I'm I'm just out here chilling, listening to you in the car, man, on my way to my home. I got to go to court this morning, so I'm going to give him support. It ain't nothing bad. He's trying to get his kid back and shit because his baby mama's stupid as fuck. I feel that. (laughs) Bitches be tripping. But shit. Yeah, they she tripping like a motherfucker. <laughs> I, I listen to y'all getting high, getting high on my way to court and shit. Listening to y'all. Okay, Rashawn, you, 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 you got a question, man? You wanna? I know, right? You you giving your life and shit. I ain't really got no question, man. I just wanted to. Oh yeah, she she looking good. You ain't gotta change your style up for nobody. Oh yeah, you got that. Keep your shit going, baby. Well, okay, I feel I really you, brother. Man, no smoking the blunt on the way to court. Uh, <laughs> well, well, you, said you, you said you like dudes who are, who sound and look dangerous. That's what he's doing. He definitely is sounding very dangerous. <laughs> oh, no, man. It's, it's, I'm in Kelly, man. It's man. You feel me? Hey, Rashawn, uh, okay. you got the you got the mixtape, Rashawn? Have you tuned into the mixtape? No, I, I, I got I got Apple Music, man. So I'm just everything on there. I'm, I'm pulling everything off oh, of there. Okay, check well, you it. You need to look up Got It Made right now on your way to court. And tell your friend when he get out to bump that too, because he's gonna be liberated. Oh, I'm on you. I'm, I just started following you on Instagram, so I'm on you now. I'm on you. I'm on you. I'm okay. on you. Like, well, right. Okay. Okay. Hey, Rashawn, go go get it. Uh, go to Pandora. Get Pandora. That's our sister company. So get Pandora. Listen to it on Pandora. All right. Okay, Pandora. Okay, we got free trials and all that too. Mike from Jersey, what's up? Jersey, stand up, Mike. You know what it do. Yo, what up, Happy Beach? Right. What, what up, fam? What it do? Yo, chill, man. Same thing. I'm on my way to court. I got a twelve o'clock. Oh, damn. What is up with y'all motherfuckers in court this morning? I don't know, man. I'm trying to slide by this joint real quick, but yo, on some real shit. Come on, I'm feeling this shit before I even heard your joint. Just what you stand for, what you said. Uh, I'm an artist myself from Jersey. I wear a mask on my face because I want people to appreciate me just for my lyrics, my content. I'm I'm, I'm not about the flash. Okay. Once you get them with your content and your lyrics and your passion, your heart, your never quit attitude, then you can remove your mask and you already got them as a fan. Mm. So I'm new to the social media. I feel you. I feel what you stand for. I'm going to follow you on Instagram. I'm new Mike, to all social media. What's what, good? What part of Jersey you from? I'm from originally from West Orange. I'm from the East. I'm all over Jersey right now. Mean, but I got mean, my Heather? family right here. I'm down south, but Sway, I dropped a joint called Hyena, man, inspired by you. You talking? Everybody say that. Oh, oh, wait, wait, don't hang them up to my Oh, man. Get out of here. Have a good Wednesday. Pre, pre, pre from Cali. What up? Kamaya got to blow her ass crazy. Pretty, what you got to say? <laughs> hi, Sway. Hi, Heather. Hey, hey, hey. Kamaya, what's up? This what it do, baby? Day. I'm from San Jose. What's going on? What's good? Bay area in the building. Okay. Hey, Kamaya, I just want to say I just love your spirit. You are dope as fuck. Thank you, Queen. I appreciate that. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I, and I will be at Complex all Saturday. We about to burn that bitch out and make it real good. We about to burn that bitch up. <laughs> okay, come through. Raise the roof with a nigga. <laughs> Raise the roof. All right, guys. All right. Have Pre, a good you, day. You're a citizen. Sway in the morning. All right, we're going to do this thing we call the mystery sack. Go ahead and reach in. Dig deep, dig deep. <laughs> so Put bad. your hands into Sway's sack. That sounds gross. <laughs> that sounds crazy. It's Sway's mystery sack on, on Shade 45. <laughs> All right, All right, okay. Kamaya. All right, here we go. How does this work, Heather B? You got to stick your hand in Sway's sack. Pause. <laughs> Pull out a question. Three. Okay. You're going to do it three times. One at a time. Read it out loud. You got to answer honestly. What's something that overwhelms you? This corny question, man. Oh, you know what all overwhelms me? Thinking about success all day. That's the only thing that overwhelms me because I just wake up every morning like, all right, what we got to do next? Yeah. That's overwhelming. You feel like you living in success now or you have no, to No, I ain't reach nowhere it. near where I want to be. You're not a boss till you make another person a millionaire. So I'm not nowhere where I want to be. Okay, so mm-hmm. whoever's in your crew, get ready. They, they ready. <laughs> they ready. We, we're going to pump the bumps. Number two. Would you rather be crazy rich or deep crazy rich? What's up? What was it? Crazy rich or, or what? Or deeply in love. Fuck that love. Love will make you, like, I feel like with money, you attract people. You yeah. feel me? 
being deeply in love, I can be broke. Because somebody will break you spiritually. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that keep you from getting to the bag. You ever been deeply in love? Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What ended it? it? Me just wanted my career. It actually, right before I blew up, I was like, nigga, this ain't going to work. You keep going to jail. You calling me from jail right now. I don't know where I'm going to be in six months. It's just not going to be here. Boop. Next month. How does it feel to be here? <laughs> <laughs> On my dead brother. That's how it went. <laughs> Get out, Kabaya. Kabaya got to go. That's it. That's it. That's Mystery it. sack is done, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, oh, give my. it up for this queen, Kamaya, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> got it, man. It's the project. I'm so proud. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, and continue success. And you That's really, a fact. you are inspiring Northern California, even beyond Northern California, in ways that we have yet to see. So, Thank you. For real. Uh, no, you got allies in us, mm -hmm. and and I'm I'm glad I, I'm glad I've been around this long. To be able to witness your journey. Thank you. Um, and thank you again. We've got Sway Fest 2 coming later this year. I'm going to be there. There it is. Going like this. Yeah. <laughs> Kamaya, ladies and gentlemen. You know what song I want to. Oh, man. Shit. You, gotta, you pick. You pick. They all slap. I don't they care. all slap. Mood ah. Swings is my joint. Ten Toes High. That's my song, man. We're going to play Ten Toes High. I want you to listen to the lyrics. Um, one of the things you said in the lyrics um, that stuck out to me, I actually wrote this down that I thought was really interesting. Uh, it ain't no such thing as family and business. Um, you make choices and folks in they feelings. Yeah. I'm talking about, this whole song is about me leaving my label and okay. just the situation that I've been through. I felt like me leaving it, it's been like people trying to break my spirit versus uplifting me and being like empowering me and me moving on in my career. Instead of you wanting to see me win for me moving on with my endeavors, it's like because you're not here, I'm going to shoot that down. And I don't fuck with that because I would never wish that upon nobody. Mm. There it is. That's just like a relationship. If you break up, you ain't going to be like, bitch, I hope you never find nobody else and you die lonely. Like, that's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't going to do that. You're going to be like, all right, fuck you, bitch. Bye. That's what you're going to do, right? You're going to just let them go along. You're be like, whatever. They're going to move on. Be somebody else's problem, whatever it's going to be. Mm -hmm. It ain't like that. It's like, Nah, this has got to be da 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 da, or it ain't gonna never be blah blah blah. And I don't like that because that's just plain evilness and yeah. it's just bitterness. I'm Malicious. Like, yeah, it's um, very not I'm, nice. It's, it's sad. Well, it hurt my feelings, man. Gangsters <laughs> cry. <laughs> Gangsters cry. I fucking cry, man. You don't I'm like, cry, you motherfuckers gonna do me Last like time this? You cried. I thought I roll for y'all on death row. No, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, you off the chain. <laughs> uh, man, it's Kamaya. Got it made. The new mixtape, Grind Work. It's the movement. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Make sure you get at her if you want to reach her on social media, at Kamaya. Yep, at K-A-M-A-I-Y-A-H on everything. Ten toes high, sway in the morning. We got getting the game up next. <laughs>